Even in the so-called WWE circus of the 80s, this one was a dud right from the start. The fans turned on it immediately, perhaps leaving some people in creative with egg on their face. The gimmick is so crappy, our partners at WrestleCraft named their annual award for the worst gimmick of the year after it. So it comes as no surprise that it's also been voted number one by you, the fans, in our poll. Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling's most crappy gimmick, the gobbledygooker. Number one, if, if number one isn't what it's supposed to be, there's going to be real issues here. What do you think? I know what it is. Number one crappy gimmick. Gobbledygooker? The gobbledygooker. Oh, that's <laughs> phenomenal. Just tremendous. That was awesome. What are you kidding? Most ridiculous. I fucking got it. <laughs> the gobbledygooker. Why was the gobbledygooker the number one crap gimmick in the whole world? Everybody looked... Everybody booed and everything, but they all remember him. We're talking about the gobbledygooker right now because everybody remembered the gobbledygooker. i never seen them come out the egg. Get the... Uh, you know, I don't even think he... I don't know. Did that, did that thing even wrestle or didn't they like can it right afterwards or something? Like immediately? It looks like Marty Croft took acid again <laughs> and he just lost the rights to H.R. Puff and stuff the gobbledygooker was a guy it's like a turkey costume and and uh uh it was a mess <laughs> it was just you know it was just like uh uh somebody that could have been parading in the Th Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and didn't the costume cost like 200 grand or something stupid I think they paid like outrageous money for this costume by the way, they, they must have spent a whole lot of money on the egg and the outfit. And I love Hector Guerrero, so kayfabe it was Hector Guerrero. It was just a, it was a gimmick for uh, Thanksgiving, you know, somebody came up with. You know, imagine him. And you know what? Hector, great wrestler. Come from a great wrestling family. You know, the Guerreros. And then put him in a turkey suit. What a fucking letdown that was. And it was uh, one of the Guerreros. See, see, see how smart he is, though. That's like the girl knowing how, okay, I'm not going to fall out of this thing. Okay? He made sure all that shit was popped out. He does the dance. I was in TNA. He would do the dance sometimes, and I was like, and that's when I knew he was the gobbledygooker. I was like, you were the gobbledygooker? Yeah. I go, you just did the fucking dance. It's great. Hector, Hector Guerrero, amazing worker. Only guy who could actually probably work in that outfit there. I, I think he just did it as a, a gimmick, a goof for the holiday, and then they used them here and there. I have a hard time selling something if, it, if it's a shit. It's like, I mean, like I would be a terrible car salesman or, or something like that, you know? Uh, I, I just, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to... I'd be too worried about my own credibility, I guess. Was it a terrible gimmick? Yeah! But did it hurt? anything hurt anybody it was fun that's it gobble 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 oh my god my lips turning white jesus christ i remember that guy right there is it a turkey because it was survivor series right yeah. gooker yeah. gobbly gooker you know on survivor series thanksgiving night and they put a luchador in a turkey costume that was a dark moment in the guerrero family history i still to this day do not get it does anybody? Do you have an explanation? Unbelievable. Unreal. Uh, it's got to be. It's got to be a rib on someone. You know. <laughs> I mean, where was that going to go? I don't. I don't know. Where did it go? I sometimes think that he says something like this, and everybody in that room, guys, what do you say? I love it. I love it. I love it, and he gets done, he goes, what a bunch of fucking cunts. A little inside information here, but Vince actually came up with this gimmick and thought it was the greatest thing he'd ever come up with in his life, and I sat next to him in a, in a car when he pitched it to me, and I... 
K Galga. Because Vince thought it was hysterical because the gimmick was he could never be pinned because he was a humpback. There's your genius, Vince <laughs> man. You know, some of the stuff Vince just did to entertain himself. He really did. Yeah, I bet you he sat and belly laughed at that, regardless of what people thought. We was riding down the street with me, Bill Barons, and some other, Michaels, some, some, Rick Michaels, and, 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 and some other people, and we come back from TNA, and they kept saying the gobbledygook. So I thought it was just some old, something stupid or gay or something. So we riding down the street, and I was in the back seat drinking. And all of a sudden, everything became funny. So for 30 miles, we was riding, and I kept hitting Rick on the side of the head and said, Gobbly Google, and I was drinking, and dude, we was acting retarded. And I had never, and then Rick called me and said, Jack, you know, that was a real gimmick. Do you remember, like, all, the, all of the uh, speculation as to what was going to pop out of that egg? Every week on WWE Saturday Morning Wrestling, which I watched religiously, you know, it's the Mr. T cartoons, the Dukes and Hazard cartoons. Here comes wrestling, and there's this egg, and they're just focusing on this egg for weeks. And you're like, what the fuck's in the egg? They did tease this for a while to figure, oh, wow, well, that's bad. Look at Gene. <laughs> that, that's pretty bad. And originally, I guess, it was supposed to be Sid's initial debut with the WWE. There were, well, there's speculation, spec rumors as they circulated that the egg was supposed to be Sid. So you're like, oh yeah, Sid's coming in. He's going to kick ass. And a rooster comes out. Is it a rooster? Is it, is it a rooster? There was talk of that was Taker's uh, debut. He's going to pop out of that egg. Boy, how long did they have that egg at TV for? Like putting it over like this egg's about to hatch. Yeah. Wow, that was... That's some good shit. <laughs> Payoff was not what it should have been because you just heard the groans of the thousands of people there and watching TV going, oh. I got to give it to Gene Okerlund, who, by the way, is probably the greatest interviewer ever. Second one is Joey Styles. The Gene Okerlund has the ability, like a Joey Styles and like a Howard Finkel and other guys, to look like he's being a babyface on TV while he's completely just crapping all over the gimmick or the product. Do you notice the little cynical, sarc if you watch this, that's what Gene Okerlund does. He kind of buries it for, for the people that are smart, but he puts it over to the fans that aren't. I actually wrote a article when I was the editor of the WWE magazine that got me in a lot of trouble at the time of the 10 worst gimmicks in WWE history, and, and that was probably number one. The gobbledygooker, I think it was a, a rotten gimmick, but I've got one worse than that. I think number one should be Mantor. Mantar? Mantar. What about Samba Simba? Who is he on that list? Bastion Booger. What about who? Uh, the, the Duke the Dumpster Drossy, T.R. Hopper. T.L. Hopper. How is Ice not in there? That's pretty bad, but I think still think the Shockmaster or Vinny Vegas or, or the Oz, the Minotaur. I think, yeah, but that, see, but the thing is, that guy's not really a wrestler. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, that's like a bird that came out of an egg. Yeah, I'm talking about. Get, to me, that's not like a like a, like a gimmick. Like if they had the dude wrestling now, you know, I, he might deserve that spot. What are we talking about? It may have been. A disaster, but we remember it, and it's part of the sports entertainment heritage. Oh!